You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. So for this video, I want to thank YouTube user 105 for this. It was their comment in the previous video that made me aware of the first automated passenger drone. This seemed like a pretty interesting topic, so I decided to do a video of it, and I'm going to discuss it a little bit here. Let's get into it. So recently, it's become fairly obvious that drones, and specifically the quadcopter industry, is blowing up. But so far, consumer applications have been largely limited to hobbyist flying, racing, and filming. This all changed at CES 2016 when a Chinese manufacturer, Ehung, has unveiled the world's first automated passenger drone. The Ehung 184 is a fully electric aircraft. That might sound a little strange at first, but electric aircraft are indeed on the way. In fact, Airbus just created the first electric plane to cross the English Channel in a late 2015 experiment. The Ehung 184 is 5.5 meters long, takes 2 hours to charge, and can fly for 23 minutes at about 500 meters off the ground. It has a maximum altitude of 3.5 kilometers and a top speed of 101 kilometers per hour. And a fun fact, the flight destination interface is actually a Microsoft Surface tablet. So where did this drone come from? The project was started in 2011 when Ehung CEO lost his good friend in a private plane accident and then later his helicopter teacher. From then on, Ehung's founder wanted to make sure that this new aircraft he was going to make was going to be incredibly safe. So back to the Ehung 184. Automation is a great fit for this application because it cuts out pilot error. Planes much more complicated than this drone are flown by computer controlled systems, so this isn't unusual at all. The company states that the navigation process is backed up by a 24-7 real-time flight command center, and they think that that means passengers have no need for a pilot's license. The downside though is that in Ehung's case, there are no manual controls to take over in the event of an emergency. So there's a few remaining questions that should be asked. Does the drone have multiple redundant systems? That is, if one mission critical element fails, does the craft keep aloft easily? For example, if one propeller is damaged, can it be flown automatically with ease? I'd expect this to be the case, but there's no confirmation. If an object unexpectedly comes in front of the drone, how will it react? I guess we've already seen some progress in that field by Intel and their drone. So I guess we can say basic flying and evasive action might not be the issue, but the real issue could be if there's an event that causes input data that confuses the computer. I think that's the most dangerous thing in this situation. But according to Ehung, the drone has been tested hundreds of times over forests, sometimes on passengers. But with these things, I guess you can never be too careful. So, the big question. Is this the future of personal transport? For me personally, I think the short answer is no. Not for this vehicle anyway. The range is too short, the battery life is a major bottleneck, and there's no way of resuming manual control in the event of an emergency and I don't think that this aircraft would pass FAA regulations anyway. But that is by no means the full story. I think a craft like this has potential for emergency respondents aid and can be very beneficial in situations where road access is limited. But to further this, without going into semantics, the formula that Ehung has here seems to be correct. And if it's not these guys, it will be another company that builds on the synergy of a computer guided and easy to use passenger drone to create something compelling. It may be many years before that happens, but to me, Ehung is the start of something. So the bigger question, is this the template for the personal flying car that we've all been promised all our lives? I guess only time will tell. I'm wishing these guys the best, and I'll watch this space closely. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, that was just a quick little video that I thought I'd do. This has been Dagogo, you've been watching Cold Fusion, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys again soon for the next video. Oh, and by the way, the Nikola Tesla video is still in production, so you guys can still keep looking forward to that. I hope to have it out by the end of this month. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.